Hello and welcome to another video and we're back on the powered armored exoskeleton on the last video to complete the carbon exoskeleton itself. That being the build on the boots and ankles so we'll get straight into the CAD design and get building them. And here we have that complete boot design for the exoskeleton so you can see the shin piece that was featured in the last video for the legs. And then if we move down from the shin piece, you've got the ankle attachments. They'll most likely need to be a spacer going in between the ankle attachments just to space it out for the ankle point and position. So we've got five millimeter carbon fiber brackets coming down to here. I've realized that this slight angle is necessary to correctly line up with your ankle. Again, there'll be two other spaces that will also act as wearing shims. That will have space for a shaft to go through the middle here. I'll put a bit of grease in between there just to make sure the movement's good. That, of course, attaches to another 5mm piece of carbon fibre. All of which I've wanted these to be separate pieces compared to the main pieces of exoskeleton like the shin piece. This allows a degree of adjustment up and down on the bolt holes. Which I think how I've got it here will roughly be how it will be on my legs. And then if we move on down, we can see these two brackets here, or four brackets should I say. These are to hold a piece of elastic that will act as an Achilles heel. As the exoskeleton won't be particularly heavy, but the armor will, I'm figuring that I could do with some form of elastic put onto the Achilles to give some assistance. So we're going to have a piece of elastic on the inside of the foot, sandwiched between these two brackets. One thing that I've realized with this from the previous prototype is you can't have preload on this. You can't have the neutral point where the toes are essentially pointing down. That's just because your shin muscle, whatever you call it, is basically too weak to lift it up. You fatigue very, very quickly. So the neutral point does need to be at this 90 degree point like you see here. The lower carbon fiber bracket then attaches to the main ankle piece, which if we rotate around to the back, you can see this main ankle piece goes underneath the main piece of the boot. And with the tread removed, you can see how it'll have a pivot point under the bottom I'll then drill a hole into this main piece of the shoe or boot. This will allow this main piece of frame to then pivot on its own axis around the bottom of the ankle. Of which, if we rotate on again, we can see these main boot, this kind of clog looking thing, almost like an armored croc perhaps. The main design principle of this is that you step into the boot and then this top cap here will then sandwich down on top of your boot, your trainer, whatever footwear you're wearing on the inside of this thereby clamping your foot down into the boot. I won't be completing this cap in this video because this will need a form of armor laying into it, but I thought you'll be able to see it here nicely in the CAD design. So if we remove that, you can get the gist of how your foot goes into this. This is a 3D print that will then be lined out with Kevlar and carbon fiber. The reason why I'm keeping the print and not making it as a mold is just because if you scuff the sides of it on rock, I don't want you to go through the actual composite material that is the actual strength of the boot, especially with carbon fiber, it goes all needly and horrible. So if you can imagine if you scrape down the side of here, went through to the carbon fiber and then touched it, you'd have the little carbon fiber needles in your hands. So actually keeping the 3D print will prevent this. And lastly, onto the boot tread. This is a custom boot tread that you might have seen in other videos for regular viewers. This will be cast out of a high abrasion rubber resin set into Kevlar, set into carbon fiber, and then some epoxy added with another two layers of carbon fiber and Kevlar. That way you get a semi-flexible springy boot tread that can also be used for another part of the mobility that's needed in this. What you might have realized so far is you've got all of the maneuverability, all of the angles of movement apart from swaying side to side on this axis. So the idea is with this is we'll have rubber mounts down the middle of the boot attaching the boot tread to the boot itself. This will then allow you to lean left and right on the boot. But to alter the stiffness of this, we'll be packing out the sides with foam, which is something I did on the last prototype. Quite an experiment, it did work pretty well. So I'll pack the sides out of the rubber mounts that'll be in the middle, out with foam, that'll stiffen it up accordingly while still allowing you the range of movement that is required to have the boot basically form around obstacles. For this U-shaped ankle piece, that will be made out of carbon fiber, but also will have to be molded into shape. So I'm trying again at using 3D printed molds to make a piece of carbon fiber. This being the shape that we actually need and this being the mold itself. So we're just gonna lay the carbon fiber into here and then cut around the sides 
of the mold and that should give us the piece that we need. I've also got some nice small but sharp divots in here to help drilling the holes into it, which should allow it all to come out a lot better than on the last episode. You can also see here that we've got the boot tread mold that all that resin will be laid into. With that said, let's get everything machine printed, molded and see what it all looks like when it's done. First up, we have the 3D printed mold for that ankle bracket ready for release wax to be put on. Then we have the main part of the boot ready for the carbon fibre and Kevlar to be laid into. Then there's the mould for the boot tread. This will be tricky to put the wax in, but I've got a method to do it. The tape is just from where I've glued the two pieces together. And that favoured method of getting the wax into all the little corners is a toothbrush. Works very well, don't knock it till you tried it. While with my lack of setup, it's quite difficult to film all of this with glue everywhere, I did manage to get a bit of a clip with some Kevlar that you can see here going into the main boot. As for the rubber resin for the treads, I got the resin from MB Fiberglass. They are based in Northern Ireland, but ship out very quickly. And the best place I've found for these things, I think this rubber is actually made for silicon moulds, but it works very well. It's just 50-50 on the hardener and the resin. The only thing is with this is it sets incredibly quickly. You do also have to put a pigment dye in it, which I always overdo it. Use way too much. You need a very, very small amount. I think it's 0.5% of the dye relative to the resin and hardener. But you do have to go very quick when I'm pouring this in, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm pouring into every little corner, making sure there's no air bubbles while going as fast as possible because I already feel it heating up and setting. When I say this dries fast, I'm talking, I don't think the pot life is realistically five minutes if you're mixing it well first. So you do have to be very quick. Bear in mind, I've also got to lay the Kevlar and carbon into this to make sure there's good bonding. On a previous video, someone did suggest making these out of TPU and just 3D printing them. Reason I haven't gone for that is twofold. One, TPU is an absolute pain in the ass to do. Could not be bothered with that. And second is if you were walking on, say, a hot sand or something, I wouldn't want them to start melting or start deforming. Whereas you know you're pretty safe with these chemical resins. And you can see now I'm just tapping the Kevlar into the top of the resin and I'll be doing the same with the carbon over the top of that. It's not that I want these fully embedded in, I want them nicely set into them, but still with the carbon and Kevlar showing a little bit on the top so that the actual epoxy resin can then soak into these. That allows good bonding all the way through from the rubber to the actual composite material that's on the top that will be used to help mount onto the boot. It's obviously a rinse and repeat for the other treads, so we'll move on to that 3D printed mould for the ankle piece. These went fairly well to plan, fairly easy to handle, so I just need to cut all this stuff off here, cut the cardboard off and the excess of the carbon fibre. Which also goes the same for the main part of the boot, just trim it round the 3D print. I could do with a mid-range tool for doing this though, because I'm doing all this with a four and a half inch grinder, it's a bit keen, the Dremel's too small, takes too long. So I really need to look at trying to get a midway piece of tooling to do this with. And of course, it was the same deal for the treads. Once I carefully as possible cut round that 3D printed mould for the ankle piece, I then just broke the mould off. Being 3D printed, it came off nicely. Sacrificial mould, but it worked very well for this prototype. It came out pretty neat to say there was 12 layers hand laminated on. It was also pretty strong when I tried to bend it, so I'd say a decent success. And even straight out the moulds with remnants of wax left, you can still see the indentations for drilling the holes. The soles also came out pretty well, although there was some imperfections around the front that I just had to go over after. But it set well with no air bubbles, so I can't complain. And then as for the clog parts of the boots themselves, they came out alright as well, trimmed up pretty well. I've also sanded all the way around this, and crucially I've sanded on the inside to make sure there's no little needles of carbon fibre that can stick up. I've then decided that I'm going to go around it with that rubber resin and just try to brush it on all the way around the sides as an extra protective layer and if I can brush it in on the inside providing that it doesn't set too fast for me to do it as I really don't have much resin left at this point. And here is the result. It brushed on pretty well but in the middle it did start to set a little bit quick to be honest. You can even see some of the brush bristles left over in that so I definitely need to go over and sand that flat might end up putting something else in the base for your boot to actually stand on some form of mat. But either way, I'm going to just lightly sand over the top of this, make sure all of this is smooth, and then paint it all in a grey to give a bit of contrast. I'll also put some foam tape over the edges just to make sure it's all smooth and you can't catch your hands on anything. And lastly, we can check to make sure that cap still fits on, which it still fits perfectly, which is good. Next, we'll go back to those treads and fit the rubber mounts and then pack it out with foam. 
I've got these two nice rubber mounts that have threads inserted in them so I can just use some nice bone head bolts for this. Which hopefully despite my terrible filming you should just be able to see the bolt head showing through on the tread here with the mounts attached. And then I've just stacked 30mm of self adhesive foam onto the treads. The stop's been 25mm so there is a bit of compression already on the foam. Now to be honest the foam that I'm using right now is a bit primitive, it is a bit rough. The problem is if I use better foam it's going to be harder and then because I haven't got the armor on yet I won't be able to tell how much movement I've got because it's just the exoskeleton so for now I'm going to have to keep it as it is. Nevertheless it's time to fit that molded ankle bracket. It turned out pretty well, my clear coating skills could be a little better but it's certainly strong enough and all the holes line up nicely. I did also realise, which I nearly forgot, I'm going to have to make a washer for all this to sit on so it doesn't wear through the carbon fibre, so here it is. I've put some holes in it on purpose so that it can fit some grease into the holes to just help it keep lubed over time. With that mounted on, I proceeded with fitting the carbon ankle hinge brackets, as well as fitting those elastic brackets for the Achilles heel. Complete with shoulder washers fitted in the hinging point, it was then time to fit the spacers through the middle, with some grease on and then get a shaft mounted through it. Which because all of the shock that is going to be induced on the suit from walking and everything is going to go directly through these ankle brackets, I decided to make it out of steel tube, which should certainly be strong enough. And before fitting the rest of the legs, I thought I'd better do a quick function check. All fits well and springs back nicely. And finally, after what it seems like to be a lot of effort, to be honest, I've got it all assembled, all put together completely fitted to the carbon exo legs from last week which after this bent over angle you can just see those extra spaces that i needed to go in between the ankle brackets and the bottom of the shins overall while the finish isn't perfect i'm pretty pleased with it at this point there's a couple of little lines i need to go over i still need to trim and smooth off a little bit of the tread at the front but overall it's pretty good the phone tape seems to be on pretty good as well might go over that again I'm also currently quite liking the grey, I think it does add a nice contrast to the darker carbon fibre and the black treads and everything. However, as normal, I didn't have enough of the right bolts for any of this, so I will be having to go over the bolts again at another point, along with the rest of the exoskeleton. But moving on, we can see the rotation is pretty nice in the ankle, and if we rotate the other boot, we can also see a nice bit of movement backwards and forwards with the Achilles working nicely. All of this means with the legs attached, it is now finally time to actually try these on and see what they're like. However, there is one thing that I need to mention, and that's the way that your shoe basically attaches to the exoskeleton boot is with a strap that goes over the top of the toe cap, which the toe cap would be packed out on the inside to make sure it's all tight and fitting. However, the toe cap isn't finished, so unfortunately there's going to be some taping involved in this, which hopefully will hold up. And then we have the leg exoskeletons from the last video attached to the ankles, the boots and everything made in this video with of course some nice tape to hold my trainers in better. They do also seem to be pretty well adjusted as they're all staying nicely in place as I bend over and move around. And then if we also zoom in you can see how it's not snatching, it's smooth in rotation all the way around in every direction. And you've also got pretty good deflection going backwards and forwards, although I have noticed that these massive boots coupled with the exoskeleton make my calves look even smaller. Something that was also pretty surprising with this is there wasn't really much squeaking, which I was kind of expecting, but it shows it's all working smooth and well when it's quiet, I guess. And then hopefully all of you watching can just about see the tread move a little bit as I lean over left to right and the give gets taken up into the foam. While I do intend on filling this gap just with something to make sure debris doesn't go in, you can see nicely how you also have some spring in the end of the toe of that tread as well with that carbon fibre bonded in. We've now got it hooked up to the rest of the exoskeleton. I've adjusted the hips that needed adjusting in the last video and this all does seem to fit a lot better now. A lot more central, a lot more where it needs to be. And if I go down, we should get a nice squat on. So we've got pretty good range of motion there. I'd say that was a decent squat in the gym. Good motion round. Good motion in lifting your legs up. The only problem I've got in this video is the fact that the tape is failing holding my uh, toes to the boots, as you can see there. So I kind of have to slide a little bit. That will be solved for the next video though. And then for regular viewers of the channel will know that I had to make some new parts of the top half of the exoskeleton. Of course, this I still haven't solved. I haven't found a better sleeve yet. So as you can see, this is taped on. But if we rotate around to the back, 
We've got all carbon fiber pieces on the back. It moves pretty good all the way around. I think it's adjusted where it needs to be, but in the next video, we'll find out. Again, we've got good rotation and you can see on the hips, it's pretty good. The belt's sitting pretty good. All of it's moving about as you would expect. Either way. Last thing for the next video, I'm gonna try find some better clothes to wear. I thought I'd try have a bit of contrast with this t-shirt. Is it very comfortable mounted on bare skin with no padding on the straps? No, it is not. I think for the next video, I'll either try get some really light colored gray trousers or maybe even white trackies or something to wear underneath this so you can see all of the mechanisms better. Same goes for the top. But nevertheless, I think it's all turned out pretty well. It is quite a lot of effort to make these boots, to be honest. There's that many processes in it. It takes a lot of time. Video is a bit delayed from where I wanted it to be. But this does pretty much complete the exoskeleton build and we'll be moving on to the armor soon. And that about brings us to the end of the video with the completion of the carbon fiber exoskeleton. In the next video, I'll be doing a full mobility check in the gym outside, make sure I can move in it all right. It'll also be a good date and point to see what happens when I actually fit the armor plate into it, how much mobility we actually lose. Also, this is the first video I've done with a proper microphone. So please let me know in the comments if it's any better for the regular viewers. One of the main reasons I actually finally bought one now is so in the next video where I'm outside and everything, I've actually got some form of decent audio. After that mobility check, it'll be moving onto the robot hand while I also prep the rest of the armor casing so I can do a quick fit check of the armor shell before I actually lay all of the composite armor into it. I should then be able to get around onto the next actuator design, which by current video count of production, will mean that the armor should roughly be done and ready to fit or fitted by the end of June, maybe early July, and the entire project will be complete by August, which will allow me more time to do the robots and move on to some other things that I've got planned. So thank you all for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.